Hello, Mr. Pod. We've been expecting you. <laughs> Hey all, hope everybody's well. So in this video, as you probably guessed already, we will be fitting some swiveling captain's chairs to our Van Helsing. But before we walk you through our process of installing them, I suppose it's better take a couple of minutes just to show you the chairs that we've actually gone with and give you the reasons behind our decision in going with them. Now these beauties are out of a 1999 Ford Galaxy and we picked them up from eBay for £200. Now they won't fit directly onto the existing bases in the van. We're going to have to weave a little magic to make them work. But once they're fully installed, we're hoping that we'll have two cheap swivelling captain's chairs for the fraction of the cost of buying a, a genuine Citroen Relay passenger seat. Now, of course, if we wasn't working to a budget here, we'd just buy the genuine passenger seat. But they're like £450, thereabouts when you can find them. And then on top of that, you also need to buy the swivel plates as well. And they're like £130 a pop. So now you're talking about £700. And what you may find is that the swivel plates on the bases leave you too high up in the cab. So then you need to go out and buy two shortened bases to replace the existing bases. And they're about £150 each. So now we're looking at about £1,000 just to have two single seats that swivel. Please don't go thinking for one moment that I'm bashing anybody whatsoever who decides to spend those sort of figures sorting out their own seating on their own camper vans because I'm not. Simple fact of the matter is housing costs us £1,500 and for that reason I can't really justify spending between £700 and £1,000 just for two swivelling seats. It just doesn't make sense to us. Anyway, enough of me waffling on about... The cost of things let's get these old seats out and these new seats in right before we start messing about with these seats let me just take a second to show you guys that i've disconnected the battery and that's to avoid any possible issues that i might have with the airbags Forward taking those two chairs out so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have a good tidy up and then we'll have a think about tackling putting these new seats in so along with the captain's chairs I've also had to pick up a seat base now as you've just saw there were six bolts holding the original seats to the bases but unfortunately 
the new captain's chairs, the holes on them don't align perfectly. So what I've done, or what I'm going to do, is I've picked up a, a two metre length of steel, which is six mil deep and 60 mil in width. And I'm going to cut that into four pieces. And each piece will bridge a section of the seat base. So I'll bolt the steel into the seat bases and then I'll bolt the captain's chairs into the, into the new steel and hopefully that will securely and safely hold them. Guys, it's been a while since I've had to put suntan lotion on in the UK. there we have it all that's the brackets made up and the bolted to the bases and what I've done is I've replaced the original 15 mil bolts with some 20 mil jobbies and they're made from high tensile steel and they literally just bolt straight into the existing base so they won't be going anywhere anytime soon so I've screwed all eight bolts through the brackets into the seat bases to make absolutely certain that everything aligns perfectly and as you can clearly see it does but what I need to do now is I need to remove these two bolts on the in front in the corner because what they're going to do is they're going to serve as an anchor point for the captain's chairs now what I mean by that is the cap I'm literally going to plunk the captain's chair on top of the seat base and then screw the bolt straight through the captain's chair into the seat base so it's nice and secure and then off the back of that what I've had to do is I've had to um, mark out and drill an additional three holes for the additional three points on the captain's chair. So I'll bolt straight through the captain's chair into those. And as a belts and braces approach, what I've done is I've picked up some lock nuts and they'll be on the back of the bolts here, so it won't be going anywhere. Just so we're singing from the same hymn sheet here, I wanted to point out to you guys that for every hole that I've drilled, into the brackets, I've then gone on to tap them. So when I screw a bolt into them, it's a nice, tight, secure connection and it won't be going anywhere, at least fingers crossed, that's the plan. And then the other thing that's probably worth pointing out to you if you haven't noticed already, is that due to the design nature of the seat base, is what I've had to do is I've had to cut out this wedge on the front steel brackets so I can slide the bracket forward ever so slightly so there's a bit more steel around the front bolts there. So in the end we opted for 30 mil bolts to attach the captain's chairs to the brackets because the 20 mil ones weren't quite long enough when you take into consideration the locking nuts. So in bolting the captain's chairs to the brackets we've also had to add some washers because the, the holes on the captain's chairs they're, they're quite they're quite big holes. So the washers they just give you that added reassurance that you got a nice secure fit there we have it that's the bench and driver's seat replaced with two swiveling captain's chairs 
but there is a problem. They only spin 180 degrees and they spin the wrong way, but there is a way to remedy that. Now that little lug there, that acts as a stop. Now what most people do who pick these chairs up to put in the camper vans is they'll cut it off. And what that then enables the chair to do is rotate 360 degrees freely. So here's the lesson of the day guys. I've cut off that little lug and I've attempted to spin the seat 360 and yes it does spin in the opposite direction now but it wasn't going 360 it was going about 300 because it was stopping on a little tab there when I move my finger you'll see it shining in the light so that tab it doesn't serve any purpose when the seat's facing forward it just it just floats it doesn't do anything but when the seat's facing the rear of the vehicle it acts as a stop for the like the seat to like butt up against so what I've done is I've take I've just got my little hacksaw out and taken that little tab off and now we have a seat that rotates 360 <laughs> guys that's two captain's chairs that swivel for a fraction of the price of the genuine articles so I think all in all these have cost us about 300 pound that's 200 pound for the seats and 90 pound for the base and the only other thing that's cost us is 10 pound for nuts and bolts and of course time now it's taken me a couple of days to fit these so yeah there's <laughs> been a steep learning curve and um, the only other thing it's cost me is a pair of jeans. I've split the knee and I've split the, split the backside as well. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with them and I hope you'll agree with me when I say that they're safe, they're functional and they look the part. So before I leave you, I just want to talk to you about the loose ends I'm going to have to tidy up in the near future. So the first being those two dangly cables there which are hanging down. You know what they are, you've seen me tugging on them. They're the um, rotating mechanism for the chairs. So I'm gonna have to jig up a little lever or something to make them more practical, because at the moment, they're, they're a bit of a swine. The second thing that I need to sort out is the that y little yellow connection down there. Now that's the seat belt pretension, if I remember correctly. Obviously they're not connected at the moment. And as a result of that, can you see that? I'm getting a little warning light on the dashboard. Now I know that's easily remedied, so let's say I'll sort that out in the very near future. Now the third and final thing that we we'll, might have to have a think about, and this will be a bit later on down the line, is the height of the chairs. I'm six foot two, and you can clearly see my feet are dangling off these. Now, I know in our very first video, we said that we want to have a, a little dining area here. So seat, table, seat the other side. And if you look at proper motor homes, they'll, they have like a raised area. So we'll probably do the same here, but I think even if we did that, my feet are still gonna be dangling. So I think we're gonna to have to bite the bullet and pay the 150 pound for the lowered bases, but we'll make that decision a bit later on down the line. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more great content like this in the very near future, if you haven't done so already guys, smash that subscribe button down below. We've got some great stuff in the pipeline for this camper van build of ours. You don't want to miss it. And if you've got any comments, questions, suggestions, whack them in the comment section down below. We'd love to hear from you. And until next time, stay safe 
take it easy and we'll see you in the next video